Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Callahan Walsh, thank you for joining me here live in Dallas, Texas. I'm so excited to talk with you. Thank you for having me. I want you to give me, catch me up on the child advocate uh, space that we don't seem to know a lot about, because I think you come so well qualified, you and your dad both. Absolutely. I, my day job is actually at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, an organization that my parents co-founded in 1984 after my brother Adam went missing in 1981. It's an organization that's gone on to help recover over 280,000 missing children. Uh, there's a lot done at that organization. Um, everything from tracking down our, our missing children, trying to get those recoveries, but trying to end child exploitation wherever we find it. And a lot of that is happening online. Um, we're seeing time and time again the online enticement, luring of children, um, the sexual exploitation of children online, sextortion, a word that we didn't even have a few years ago where an individual will blackmail a child for sexually explicit images and continue blackmailing them as well. And so uh, it, it's really important to educate the public on these things. People can go to missingkids.org uh, for more information uh, on missing and exploited children's issues. And I just uh, beg everybody to do what they can do to make sure their communities are safe. Callahan, you're so very young to be doing this. And I'm going to ask you a question. I hope you haven't been asked this before. How do you battle evil in the space that you're in? Because this is what you're up against. Well, it's about saddling up. Uh, my grandfather had a great saying, and it said, uh, if good men do nothing, then evil prevails. And it's about doing the right thing. I watched my father do it time and time again on America's Most Wanted. I saw both my parents putting in the work at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And it's about good people coming together and doing the right thing. There's so many other great child advocates that have helped us and joined the fight to make sure our world is a safe place for children. And it's really about coming together. There are so many good people uh, in this world. We profile the bad ones, but there's a lot of good ones out there, and it's about coming together, sharing resources, sharing information, and making sure that, that we protect our loved ones. You have been seen on every program talking about what you do. What has been the advantage, excuse me, <clears throat> what has been the advantage of having such a high-profile platform well, it, it's all about uh, sharing awareness about these issues and sharing the individual stories uh, of our missing and exploited children and these criminals out there as well and the families that are reeling after the loss of a loved one. Uh, we call it the story of one, uh, where we tell a story individually, one at a time, get the public's interest uh, in what's going on and sharing these images of missing children and the perpetrators. The most important tool when it comes to the recovery of a missing child is a photo of that child. And spreading that around through traditional media, through social media, is a way that we're able to recover these missing children faster than ever before. And it's also a way that we're getting tips, great leads, and captures quicker than ever before on some of these wanted fugitives. What advice do you have to us, me, my listening audience, ordinary Americans, about the protection of our children? Is What do we need to know? Well, you need to know uh, the dangers that are out there, and, and, and educating yourself is, is part of that. But also talking to your children about safety, empowering them with safe and smart decision making, because parents can't always be there. Uh, they need to, to talk to their kids, have ongoing conversations with their kids about safety, and making sure those conversations, like I said, are ongoing, because with the same conversation you're having with your youngest child, it's not the same conversation you're having with your oldest child about safety. So at the National Center, we have some great child safety education programs that teach parents and kids how to make those safe and smart decisions, both online and in the real world, and prevention is key. Recently, we had a high-profile case, and I'm thinking these are the kind of cases you will be profiling, but also lesser-known cases with Jamie Claus. How, how abnormal is it for her to be found alive? Well, with a stranger abduction like that, it, it, it is amazing that we were able to get her back alive, because we know at the National Center that's usually not the case. However, 
we have had way too many long-term recoveries like J.C. Dugard and Elizabeth Smart to ever give up hope on these missing children. We know the families will never give up hope and we, will, we won't give up hope either. We continue looking for these missing children in, in, until they're well into their adulthood. We have some victims who are kidnapped as children who are in their 50s and 60s where we're still age progressing those photos. Um, we do it every two years until the child turns 18 and then every five years after that trying to get the most accurate photo after the public in hopes that they spot one of these missing children and help reunite them with their families. And my final question will be coming from Facebook. I had a lot of people weigh in who are people of color and they say that they need the same kind of help that others in society need. How can they become more visible when their children are missing? Well, they're, they're absolutely correct. Um, unfortunately, media tends to um, tends to, to profile the cases of the blonde-haired, blue-eyed kids. And I ask reporters all the time, name one African-American or Latin child, missing child in your community, and they often can't do it. And so it's really about engaging the public, sharing those images of their missing children on social media. Social media is a great platform. It's an inexpensive way to share those images of missing children. So you see missing children's posters shared by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Share those on your page as well. Talk to your kids about safety. Download some of our presentations, our child safety resources. Go into your community. Talk to your kids about safety. We have incredible presentations there at our website that can be downloaded for free. They have talking points, uh, speaker's notes, uh, they have beautifully designed and, and edited and have great videos and those resources we provide to the public free of charge to take into their communities because as you said uh, the African American and Latin communities are often underserved and especially in, in, in this instance as well. We know that uh, African American missing children are overrepresented in our database meaning there's more missing children uh, in, in these communities than there ever should be and so it's so important for the community leaders to understand that and do what they can do to make sure their communities are a safe place for these kids. Callahan Walsh, I really thank you for being a guest. Your show, In Pursuit with John Walsh on Investigation Discovery, when do you want us to watch? T uh, well, tonight at 10 o'clock or Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. We'll be there. Perfect. Maybe we can make a difference by watching. Thank you so very much for being my guest on thank the Valder BB Show. Thank you for having me.